Hello everyone. Uh, this is our uh, webinar review for the midterm. So we are going to start. Um, first of all, welcome to everybody. Thank you for. Uh, we have 26 attend attendees right now, and thank you for your uh, for your interest. And we are going to start doing our review. Okay, so uh, we are going to go over very few. Uh, we are for a lot of remarks, I mean, and one thing that I want you to pay attention is about, first of all, uh, the organ system. So you need to know what, what is integumentary system, what is the definition of integumentary system. We are going to talk about all the systems, especially of the one who are going to be related to the homeostasis. Homeostasis is going to be the relationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system. And about the planes, talking about the planes, I really want you to be sure what is a sagittal plane, what is a coronal plane, what is a transverse plane. Okay, so about the six dimensions, I'm going to make emphasis about the six dimensions and please, I want you, you to remember what is the difference between health and wellness. Health is going to be freedom of physical disease. Meantime, wellness, wellness is going to be your, uh, your uh, lifestyle. So that means diet and exercise. How is, how is your diet, how, what you eat, how much activity you will have. All right, so focus on this. We have the health dimensions and the health dimensions we need to remember our the spiritual dimension that is the relation with yourself. So how you're going to accept yourself. Uh, for example, you believe making you happy, making you depressed. Uh, uh, what is your faith? What is your hope? So those are actually related to a spiritual, a spiritual dimension. Just remember we have the social, emotional, your feelings, uh, environmental, um, you need to review this, please. Um, try to uh, remember what is an example of each of these. Okay? All right. So let's keep going. And another uh, important topic is about the prevention, disease prevention. Primary disease prevention is vaccines are an. A, 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 risk factors, right? To prevent the risk factor. For example, avoid excessive alcohol, avoid smoking. Uh, for example, your diet, uh, no uh, fat, uh, no uh, trans fats, for example, and uh, vaccines. Secondary disease prevention with the early diagnosis that we already know. Tertiary is when uh, is early treatment of the disease. Okay, so uh, for this, I need to remark about the homeostasis. Homeostasis is going to be the balance, the internal balance. In, keep the internal balance. You need to remember that we have two systems, the endocrine system and the nervous system that are going to be uh, uh, communicating all the time. Remember, the homeostasis is between the nervous system and the endocrine system. At this level, you should know that the uh, nervous system uh, related to homeostasis is going to be the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is nervous system related to the endocrine system that is the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland, okay? Remember the, the uh, hypothalamus we call the big gossiper because they know everything that happened outside of your body and inside of your body, right? So that is the two things that we need to remember about the nervous system, about the homeostasis. Another thing, basically, that many questions are being related to know the concept about what is anab uh, anabolism and what is catab catabolism. Anabolism is building up, catabolism is breaking down. The definition of metabolism is going to be the how we obtain energy and Another definition of metabolism is anabolism plus catabolism. So it's the sum, summation of these reactions, anabolism and catabolism. 
pathology. What is pathology? Pathology is the study of the disease. And we was talking about many things about disease, right? For example, sign. You need to know what is a sign. What is a symptom? What is a syndrome? What is, uh, what is a disease? Symptom is subjective. Pain, for example. Sign, remember your vital signs, measurable. So blood pressure, temperature, uh, heart, heart rate, and pulse. So those uh, heart rate and uh, uh, respiratory rate. So those are the vital signs. That's why we call vital signs, vital signs. Uh, if you remember syndrome is the group of signs and symptoms that is, for example, the febrile syndrome. Febrile syndrome is the conjunction of signs and symptoms. Syndrome equal to say signs and symptoms. The febrile syn uh, syndrome, febrile syndrome, mean coming from fever, is that uh, you have the temperature that can be measurable. When you have the temperature high, you can see that your heart rate is going up to your breathing is going to increase. And, uh, and the, those are signs. And the symptoms is the malaise. You feel weak, you feel pain, you feel headache, you feel uh, actually not able to be focused. So those are actually symptoms plus the signs that we just mentioned are going to be what we call a syndrome. Okay? And the febrile syndrome is the group of uh, of actually uh, signs and symptoms together. Okay. All right. So what is a disease? A disease is a is a group of syndromes. Okay. Group of syndromes. All right. So talking about the matter uh, and mass, I just want just to mention the definition of mass is the amount of matter. The what is weight? Uh, sorry, uh, amount of matter is is mass. What is weight is the measure of the how the gravity push or pull down a mass. So that is weight. And matter, matter is anything that occupies space. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. One thing that you need to remember that is basic for the next lectures is that energy cannot be created, neither destroyed. All right, so talking about the, um, the elements, you need to remember a few things. Number one, there probably there are going to be questions. How is the relationship between two elements? And, uh, and you need to remember the orbits. The, the, the first orbit is going to be uh, uh, two electrons as maximum. The second orbit is going to be eight electrons. And the third orbit, eight electrons. So just remember the number of electrons of element is going to be the same number of the protons and the same number for the neutrons. When you get rid of some of the neutrons, for example, I have eight electrons, I have eight protons, I have eight neutrons. If I take, if I remove one of the neut neutrons, that is going to produce a radioactivity. Okay, so that is called what we call is isotope. Now, if you take one of electrons and you have the summation of positive and negative and result in negative, that is going to be what we call an anion. Uh, if, you are, uh, if you add some electron, it's going to be an anion. If you take out one of electron, you will have the summation more protons. So that is going to be a cation. Okay, so uh, that is what I want you to remember about ions. Ions is an atom who has a charge. Okay, so that is about what we, I want you to remember please for uh, uh, lecture uh, one. Let me see if I can close this. Okay, so let go, let's go to lecture two. And lecture two, we will have uh, actually a more about electrons. And for this, what I want you to remember is what is valency. 
Valency is the number of electrons that an atom wants to gain or to lose. So that, are, that is the definition of uh, valency. Uh, another thing I want you to uh, remember are the chemical bonds. Remember, ionic take out all the, all the electrons of the other atom, and covalent is going to share electrons one to, one to another. So uh, ionic bonds, as they are going to be weak uh, uh, bonds, meantime the covalent bonds are going to be strong bonds. Strong bonds. Okay, so we have, for example, example of uh, covalent is going to be a molecule of uh, uh, hydrogen, H2. So this, here we have hydrogen, hydrogen, one proton, one proton, they share one electron, so that is H2. So that is a covalent uh, bond. So you need to remember this chart where you need to uh, make the difference between ionic and, and covalent bonds. So we have covalent bonds, we have water, methane, oxygen, hydrogen, and gas, oxygen gas. Meantime, ionic bonds, the best example you can have is the sodium chloride, sodium chloride. Okay, so one thing I want you to remember is this, that the covalent uh, bonds, covalent bonds are going to be divided in polar and no polar. So those two are covalent. Covalent can be polar and no polar. Covalent polar, we have the water. Covalent no polar, we have the fat. Covalent polar is the water, is hydrophilic. Covalent no polar is, for example, fat, and that is hydrophobic, hydrophobic, okay? So that is what you need to keep in mind. Okay, so talking about the uh, metabolism, we already know that uh, metabolism is the chemical process which cells and the substance and energy needed to sustain life. So how to produce energy? How is that, right? And uh, uh, metabolism can be defined as the summation of anabolism means building up plus the process of catabolism that this means breaking down. All right, so about the cavities, this is a must. You need to know what is uh, what are the dorsal. Dorsal is posterior, the cranial and the spinal cavity. We have the ventral, we have the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic area. For this, you need to remember that the thorax is divided in mediastinum. And the mediastinum, the most important that you need to remember is the middle mediastinum where we are lo uh, located the, the heart. Now, pericardial cavity. Hi, Jill, please. Open eyes, open ears here. Pericardial cavity is the, air, is the place where the heart is going to be. The heart is covered by the pericardium, that is a membrane that is surrounding the heart. Pleura, pleura is the pleural cavity, is the place or space where the lungs are going to be located. And the lungs are going to be covered by what we call the pleural membrane. The abdominal cavity is, if we see the abdominal cavity here, that is going to be covered too by the peritoneum, peritoneum. Pleuritis, inflammation of the lungs, of the membrane of the lung, pericarditis, inflammation of the heart, of the membrane of the heart, and peritonitis is the inflammation of the peritoneal membrane. Okay, so that is what you need to remember by heart completely. Okay, open eyes, open ears here. There is going to be a, a, a different type of questions about that, and I need to ask you this because that is really important. So we have, for example, the nine regions, nine regions, nine regions, three, six, nine. We have the right hypochondrium, that we have the liver. The epigastrium, we have the stomach. The left hypochondrium, we have the spleen. Don't forget about the spleen. The right lumbar region, we have the ascending colon. The umbilical region, 
the small intestine, the left lumbar region, we have the descending colon, the right iliac fossa, we have the appendix, the hypogastric region, we have the uterus and the urinary bladder, and the left iliac fossa, we have the colon sigmoids. Okay? In addition to that, you need to know what is superior to the umbilical region, or what is inferior to the umbilical region, or any questions about that. What is lateral to the epigastrium? It's going to be the left hypochondria, or the right hypochondria, lateral. What is lateral to the hypogastric? Or what is superior to the left iliac fossa? You need to just put in your mind this picture, and you will, you will answer correctly. About the quadrants, the quadrants, what is important here is that the mid-sagittal plane and the transverse plane are going to co cross through the navel, through the navel. So we have the right upper quadrant, etc. And you can tell that in the right upper quadrant, we have mostly what we have is the liver. In the left upper quadrant, we have the stomach and the spleen. The, in the left lower, uh, in the right lower quadrant, we have the appendix and the cecum, and the cecum is the beginning of the ascending colon. And on the left uh, lower quadrant, we have the colon sigmoid. Okay, so that is about our lecture number two. Let's go our lecture number three. If there is any question, yes, please raise your hand. Okay, so lecture number three, we are going to see a few things that are really relevant. So we have the classification of the nutrients that we are going to see. Remember, the macronutrients and the micronutrients, uh, the difference is not the size of the nutrient. What is the difference is the amount that you need to eat every day. Macronutrients, micronutrients, and water. Water is not considered macro or micro, so it's a part. So macronutrients will be which one? Carbs, lip, lipids, and proteins. And the micro is going to be vitamins and minerals. So just to make a, a, some uh, uh, shortcut here, we have the vitamins are going to be called the coenzymes, coenzymes, coenzymes. That is going to help the uh, metabolic reactions in the body. And minerals are called the cofactors, cofactors. Okay, so here what we have here is the carbohydrates and the overall situation here is that I want just you to remember a few things. Number one, that the carbs, proteins, and lipids, all of them are going to be absorbed by the intestine and are able to pass to the cell when they are in the, uh, uh, in as monomers. The monomer of the protein, amino acid, the monomer of the, uh, of the carb is going to be glucose, galactose, or the fructose. And the monomer for the fat are going to be the fatty acids. Fatty acids. One thing uh, I want about carbohydrates, so you already know what is the disaccharides. You must know this: sucrose, galactose. Uh, sorry, sucrose is the fructose plus glucose. Maltose is uh, the uh, maltose uh, is the beer. Glucose plus glucose and lactose, the mostly you will find in the milk. Glucose plus galactose. So these disaccharides they need uh, an enzyme. This enzyme is going to split the sucrose into, into monosaccharides. The maltose, that is a disaccharide, needs um, an enzyme who is going to break down the maltose into two monosaccharides, that is the glucose and another molecular glucose. The same for the lactose. Remember, these guys, the monosaccharides, are the ones can be absorbed. The disaccharide, sucrose, maltose, and lactose cannot because they are too big. All right, so the uh, important thing about the polysaccharides uh, uh, is that we have the starch, the glycogen, and the cellulose. A starch. A starch is what you, for example, have spaghetti, you have bread, you have some uh, 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 donut, whatever. Those are starch. And this starch can 
break it down into disaccharides and then it's going to break down into monosaccharides. The glycogen, glycogen, the glycogen is glycogenesis, remember glycogenesis is the formation of glycogen, glycogenesis, glycogenesis. And that glycogenesis or gly the glycogen is formed when you eat excess or uh, some extra uh, glucose. So the glucose can be used as energy, but if you're still eating glucose, they're going to form the glycogen, okay? Glycogenesis. But then the glycogen, that is a carbohydrate, 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 they are going to break down into disaccharides and then into monosaccharides. Glycogen is this process of breaking down is called the glycogenolysis. The glycogenolysis, sorry, glycogenolysis. So glycogen to glucose, glycogenolysis. Uh, glucose to glycogen, glycogenesis. All right, so this is carb, okay? And how much glycogen we have? Two pounds, open eyes, open ears, two pounds. And each pound is going to collect or strap uh, four pounds of water. So for each pound of glycogen, we have two pounds. Total, we have a weight of 10 pounds. All right, so cellulose. Cellulose is the fiber we eat in the salad. Cellulose is going to enter into the system. It's going to release all the enzymes from the salad. And the cellulose are going to change name and call now. Actually, it's the same. It's called fiber. Fiber is being eaten by the uh, flora that we have in the intestine. And this produces the vitamin K. The, the, the bacteria, the good bacteria in the intestine eating the fiber, they have a pro, they produce they produce the vitamin K. There are another vitamin like a biotin, I didn't mention, but definitely you need you must to remember, need to remember the vitamin K. Why is important about that? Because if somebody is taking antibiotics, for example, for some infection. The antibiotic is going to kill the bad bacteria, but do not discriminate with the good bacteria. So what is going to happen can sweep out all the flora of the intestine that can lead into the area. So cellulose. Okay, so we have the disaccharides, the polysaccharides, the cellulose, and the, uh, the, the way to form the, uh, the disaccharides are going to be through the dehydration. Glucose plus glucose is equal maltose. When the glucose come together with the glucose, two molecules of glucose, they are going to release water and from this reaction and they produce the maltose, dehydration. Hydrolysis is when you put a piece of bread in your mouth, so it's the water with the starch, they are going to actually uh, break down, break down into from polysaccharide into monosaccharide. Starch is a polysaccharide, of course. Okay, talking about the uh, proteins, the main functions. Proteins are going to be part of building tissue, repair tissue, enzymes, hormones are going to do fluid balance. Don't forget that the fluid balance is because the protein is able to retain water, okay? It's going to attract water. We have different different uh, uh, type of protein. We have albumin, that is the most abundant uh, uh, protein in the body. Hemoglobin, hemoglobin, myoglobin, that both these transport blood, uh, oxygen in the blood. Myoglobin is going to uh, keep oxygen in the muscles, transport oxygen. Those are proteins, and the sodium, potassium pumps, or calcium channels that make the electrolytes coming in or coming out according what the, the patient or the cell needs at that moment. We have hormones, hormones, hormones are the, mostly all hormones are going to be proteins. The receptors, receptors, receptor for example, the insulin is coming to uh, knock the door in order to make the glucose get in. So that receptor that the insulin is trying to activate is made up from protein. Enzymes, we are talking about that is uh, a substance that is speed up the chemical reactions. 
these enzymes they need they need micronutrients these enzymes they need vitamins as coenzyme and they need cofactors minerals in order to make the enzyme be completely active otherwise the reaction will not occur another thing that you need to remember is the clotting process the fibrogen okay I'm just please uh, open eyes open ears the fibrogen we have antibodies antibodies that are immunoglobulins immunoglobulin globulin is a protein so the globulin is a protein is going to have an activity of a uh, part of the immune system that is called the antibodies all right so just to remember about uh, our proteins the proteins are going to have uh, are going to have the transcription from the RNA messenger to the DNA from the DNA and they come out that is the transcription they go out of the cell of the sorry of the nucleus they go to the cytoplasm into the endoplasmatic reticulum and that is where it's going to happen that translation translation is the uh, according to the sequence of the RNA messenger they are going to come ribosomes that are the cards of the safe way bringing the amino acids and the amino acids are the ingredients so you place the ingredients one after another one after another until complete the recipe and that is going to create a, a chain of amino of amino acids that is called the primary protein so this is the primary protein you see there is actually a, almost a line it's like a necklace a necklace of pearls and we have then the secondary the secondary uh, is not going to be linear a structure is going to be a folding alpha and the beta pleat uh, is not functional yet it's not functioning yet so what we have now is the tertiary protein tertiary protein is the 3d configuration some of them are going to be active already they are still in the uh, endoplasmatic reticulum that is traveling little by little to the Golgi apparatus. Then we have the quaternary and is full functioning quaternary. Uh, they have more intricate uh, appearance, more uh, elaborate 3D shape, and you remember the enzymes. The enzymes they have uh, receptors. The enzymes are going to have uh, like a binding site. Remember the binding site should be the same the same shape of the reactant or the substrate that are going to match if they don't match the enzyme will not work on that example the lipase lipase is an enzyme that is having is going to digest fat so the binding side of the enzyme is going to be similar to the structure of part of the molecule of fat where they are going to react okay all right so uh, we have a hemoglobin the insulin is a protein all right so that is about our uh, our uh, uh, actually the protein uh, part let's talk about tissues and for tissues I want to refresh you and I want to you remember high yield and open eyes open ears from all the epithelia we have how many tissues four tissues right uh, from the epithelial tissue the one I want you to remember the pseudo stratified this is the pseudo stratified then the pseudo stratified epithelium that is located mostly in the trachea trachea and these are the cells of the uh, pseudo stratified so here we have one of the cells of the pseudo stratified is going to be modified and convert into the goblet cell this is the goblet cell this is can you see this the nucleus 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 this is the height of the cell one height of the cell and this like a thick area here are the cilia that are moving and this bluish here that we don't see here this bluish is the mucus that is produced by the goblet cells so what is doing this is going to protect against the invasion invasion or the entry of bacteria and or dust for example okay so goblet cells are specialized to produce mucus 
Now, we are going to talk about the uh, connective tissue. The function of the connective tissue, tissue is to connect. Simple. And uh, what I want you to remember are actually the classification of the connective tissue. Open eyes, open ears here. We have the liquid, we have blood. Try to remember, one, two, three, four. Liquid, blood. Then we have the heart. The opposite of liquid is heart, just to remember, bone and cartilage. Bone and cartilage. Soft, loose tissue is the areolar adipose. This is the fat around the belly, for example. And this, and the fibrous, that is the hard one to remember. Just remember lift, L-I-F-T, lift. L-I means ligaments, F, fibrous, and T, tendons, lift. Okay, so talking about the muscles, this is extremely important, please. Uh, muscles, we have three types, a skeletal muscle, a smooth muscle, and the cardiac muscle, right? So we have muscular, smooth, and cardiac muscle. So to start, you need to remember the, uh, what is the difference. You need to uh, know the difference between skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. You can write down or you can make notes Skeletal is voluntary, consciously voluntary. A smooth muscle, involuntary. Cardiac muscle is going to be, uh, is going to be, uh, um, is going to be uh, involuntary too. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to just give me a second. Okay. All right, so let me see. Uh, I'm going to check if you, if you are listening to me. Just a moment. I want to check. Just a moment. I'm going to check on one. Just a moment, please. Ava, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So so far, so far you are here. You, uh, everything is being listening. Yeah, it's clear. I'm I'm hearing you good. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So now. Uh, all right, perfect. Let me close this. All right. So because, all right. All right, so here we have the difference between the three uh, cells. This is the striate muscle, a striate muscle. Why? Because we have these estriations. Where is coming from the estriations? Estriations mostly are coming from what we have here is the striate muscle. So we have some uh, bands of acting and myosin. Those are proteins that in the microscope there are going to be, there are thousands of these for each fiber. Fiber, what is a fiber? Muscle. Fiber muscle is the same to say one cell of the muscle. What is the cell of the muscle? A fiber. Fiber is equal to say cell muscle. Okay, so here we have the difference very fast. We have estriations here. We have in the cardiac muscle, we have estriations here. We have the nuclei in the skeletal muscle is multinuclei, it means a multiple nucleus, and one nuclei in the smooth muscle. What is this is cylindrical shape, this is fusiform shape, this is actually uh, more uh, uh, on, the, on the cylindrical uh, side shape. And what we have here is the big difference between the skeletal and the smooth. Multiple nuclei, one nuclei. Cylindrical, fusiform. Estriations, no estriation is in, in the smooth muscle. And the cardiac muscle is in between. We have one nucleus as the smooth muscle. We have estriations as the, as the skeletal muscle. And we, it's almost cylindrical, let's put it this way, on the, on the shape of the cardiac muscle, cardiac cell. Then we have the, uh, the intercalate discs. The intercalate disc, this one, please look at that, is going to be in the extremes of the cell. And these are a thick membrane where they're going to attach close, very close to another uh, cardiac cell. And the purpose of this is the electrical impulse, electrical impulse. All right, so talking about the, nerv the nerv uh, nervous uh, tissue, nervous tissue, we, have, we already talked epithelial, we talk about connective, we talk about muscle, and the fourth tissue is the nervous tissue. 
we have the body of soma please listen to that is the body of soma body of soma we have here the axon we have the terminal axon we have the dendrite 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 electrical impulses are going to run from the body towards the axon towards the terminal axon so this way all right so we have the Schwann cells we explained in class what is the Schwann cells they contain myelin fat and what is going to do is to accelerate the electrical impulse produced in the body or soma of the cell so they are going to they are going to jump from one uh, uh, space to another in between the myelin cells so from here to here from here to here very fast again this myelin is going to be in the white matter if you remember white matter the white matter what is the function to communicate to transport information from where from the gray matter conclusions gray matter are in the cortex gray matter are in the cortex of the brain and they do not have the Schwann cells and the white matter the white matter are going to be the ones who contain the Schwann cells because they want to have the transmission very fast glia glia is the collective name uh, name for cells that are going to support and uh, protect the nerve cells so for example let me see if i have some picture here no all right so this uh, uh, glia are going to be in this portion in this area and this glia is in contact with the uh, blood uh, blood circulation the glia cell that let's imagine here they are going to filter the oxygen and nutrients that are going to pass towards the nerve cell the the purpose of this is to protect the nervous system all right so that is number three okay let me end the show here okay so let's go to number four all right so in number four we have a few things that we there's dna uh dna um uh, topics that are going to remark and what we need to remember about the dna is that first of all we have the dna one thing i want to tell you is the dna is going to be like a uh, 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 totally uh, coil when the cell is not reproducing they have the shape of the chromosomes and the shape of the chromosomes are going to happen when the cell will reproduce so when they reproduce you're going to see the presence of 46 chromosomes every single cell in your body have six chromosomes all right so here what i want you to remember about my favorite picture is the the, the dna the base are the nucleotides the nucleotides these are the base and the nucleotides are going to be the a g c uh, a g c t right or a a t c g those are the nucleotides important please open eyes open ears this is one half of the step is and there's another half of the step here and they are going to be joined together half the half one half and the other half is going to be the uh, hydrogen bond hydrogen bond for example from here to here is the gene if this the gene from here to here the gene is a group of bases if i want to i want to know this recipe what they are going to do is the hydrogen bonds are going to open and break it down and separate one side of the stir one side of the dna so and this the rna messenger is coming in the middle and copy the information that the base sequence are giving in that specific gene so that is going to be the recipe that later on is going to go to form a protein this process of copying or rewriting rewriting the recipe is called the transcription after the transcription happened this uh, uh, that was apart they are going to come together forming with 
hydrogen. It's like a zipper, hydrogen bond. Okay, so uh, for this, we need to remember this transcription translation. Transcription happened in the nucleus, and the translation happened in the what? In the cytoplasm. Okay, one thing that we need to remember the adenosine, 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 adenosine is the uh, part of the ATCG, remember? All right, so the adenosine is two parts of the ATPs. So this is a nucleotide or base, nucleotide equal base, base equal nucleotide. These bases are actually not only part of the DNA or RNA, but they are going to be they are going to be in, okay, so another students, okay. Uh, okay, and that is going to be part of the ATPs, ATPs. That's what I want you to remember, please, okay? So this is the adenine, one in, cytosine, on uracil. Uracil, look at this, this is the RNA, RNA. is adenine, in DNA is A and T. Remember A, T, and T? So A and T, but this is RNA, right? Uh, 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 RNA, so ribonucleic uh, nucleic acid. And this uh, A is going to match with T, no, with uracil. So the DNA have timing, but the RNA do not. So the timing is replaced by the uracil. So the A is going to be complement with U, and C and G are going to be as DNA complements the same okay so remember the hydrogen hydrogen uh, bonds that are going to join one side of the DNA to the other side why we have two because uh, because that is going to protect each other okay so that's why there the theory is telling that you have uh, they, they protect each other okay All right, so let's see. Uh, we have, oh, this is important. There is uh, many remarks about this, so please pay attention. Uh, here, what I want you to remember is very simple. So first of all, you need to remember the definition of marasmus or Quashacor. What is rickett disease? Don't get confused between marasmus and rickett disease. So marasmus and Quashacor are protein deficits. Marasmus, first year of life, and Quashacor, two years or more. So just remember that we have uh, Marasmus is short word, Quashacor is longer word, two years, less than, uh, this is about one year. Just to remember, rickets is actually here again, this is lack of proteins, lack of proteins. And this is the uh, uh, lack of vitamin D. What is lack of vitamin D? you cannot reabsorb calcium. And that means that you have the, uh, we have what you call osteomalacia. What is osteomalacia? Malacia, weakness, or weaker, and osteobonds, weaker bonds. Okay, so here we have etiology, is a study of the disease. Incidents are the new cases in one year acute less than three months, chronic more than three months. Idiopathic is the nice way to say, I don't know. Iatrogenic is any side effect of the medical treatment or pharmacological treatment or therapy in any, uh, uh, in whatever sense it is. So is there some, produce some damage or hurt in the patient or adverse effect that is called iatrogenic effect. Communicable disease is the transmission, the transmission, fecal oral, fecal oral. So uh, go to the bathroom, don't wash your hand, that is already fecal oral, oral. Uh, you eat something uh, uh, without washing your hands, you're, that is oral fecal. Uh, for example, sexual transmission by sexual contact. Uh, for example, uh, drug addictions to share needles. For example, blood transfusions are going to be or uh, they are going to be transmitted by droplets, right? And when somebody sneezes, 
right? So those are the communicable disease. Epidemic is uh, epidemic is uh, when the number of cases you expect in a year are higher than the uh, unexpected. Pandemic is uh, pandemic is when the disease is spread out to regions that you did never was happening and is spreading out in large areas. Nosocomial infections are going to be the, um, uh, for example, Clostridium difficile. We will explain that in another class, as Clostridium difficile, when you uh, sweep out the flora, the normal flora with antibiotic, the one who survived is the C. diff, Clostridium difficile. I said, I'm alone, I can reproduce, I can do whatever I want, and the Clostridium difficile start to reproduce, reproduce, and can lead into a severe diarrhea. And just a parenthesis here, uh, the uh, prevention for this or the, um, uh, 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 what the what thing we need to do is to wash hands with soap, with soap, okay, not with alcohol only. We need to be with soap when you have costume deficiency. Science is everything that is measurable. Uh, all the vital signs are signs. Temperature, blood pressure, pulse, and uh, respiratory rate. Symptoms is going to be, for example, any uh, subjective, uh, any subjective uh, evidence of disease. For example, pain. We have nauseous, pain, nauseous. Uh, for example, you feel dizzy or you have a vertigo. Uh, actually, that is not a sign; it's as a symptom. Okay. Okay, so we talk about the primary, secondary, uh, tertiary disease. That is a must. You need to know what is the primary, secondary, tertiary prevention. All right, so here we are going to just finish our lecture number four. So let's go over our lecture number five. Okay, lecture number five. Uh, okay, let me see. All right, so let's talk about fat and the fat. Uh, as you know, this is a summary again. Ionic uh, sodium chloride, covalent can be polar, no polar, no polar fat, hydrophobic, covalent po no polar, hydrophobic, covalent polar, hydrophilic. Example: of water. Okay. And uh, here we have, uh, we are going to talk about the saturate and unsaturate. You already know that the fat, when it is unsaturate, is going to be more healthy than in the saturate fat. The saturate fat produces more elevation of H of uh, LDL. The unsaturate fat is going to promote the increase of the good cholesterol that is the HDL. Okay? Okay, so trans. Trans is when you have the atoms, you see here, this is string, uh, cis, sorry, cis, they have uh, the molecules on the same side. Trans, the hydrogens are going to be in the opposite side. So opposite side hydrogens, we have hydrogens in the same side. In order to produce this, we have a reaction called the hydrogenation. So we are pushing, we are moving this guy here and this guy here, and that is called the hydrogenation. Cis is okay, but trans, that is, that's why it's called trans, trans, transverse, that is going to be a man-made. So that is basically uh, the uh, fast food. Okay, so hydrogenation. Okay, we was talking about the margarine. We was talking about 0 0.5 grams per serve, that is, uh, they allow not to put it in the in the what in the in the, in the label. They put zero trans, and the lipids are basically three things: fatty acids, triglycerides, and cholesterol. Please, cholesterol cannot be used for energy. Cholesterol, we need it for what? For the structure of the cell membrane. Number two. We have for the production of hormones. So not all hormones are proteins. The majority of hormones are proteins, but some hormones are being made from uh, cholesterol. What is that? Estrogens. 
from cholesterol, testosterone from cholesterol, progesterone from cholesterol, cortisol, the stress hormone from cholesterol, aldosterone that produces the reabsorption of sodium in the kidney, that is from cholesterol. Plus, the cholesterol is going to uh, form the vitamin D, vitamin D. So we need cholesterol in order to produce vitamin D. Again, what is vitamin D, D doing? Is promoting the absorption of calcium at the level of the intestine. Okay? All right, so let's keep going. Uh, okay. Surfactant substance is, for example, the bile, right? Surfactant substance, what they are going to do, that are going to lower the surface of tension of the liquid. In this case, for example, the fat is going to be a, a big uh, component like that. You put surfactant substance, they are going to divide in small bubbles, in small bubbles. If you have many of these uh, small bubbles, cutting in small bubbles, the surface area of contact is going to increase because you have more bubbles, more bubbles, more bubbles, and you sum all the surface contact, they are going to increase the surface contact. With what? For example, with the enzymes that make more effective the digestion. For example, the action of the fat, uh, of the uh, lipase in the uh, fat. All right, so this is our friend here, cholesterol. Uh, so all the, all the uh, functions of cholesterol that we want to know. Okay, prostaglandins, that is actually, we have prostaglandins are going to have many effects, right? So those, number one is local messenger, local messenger, local messenger. Local messenger for what? For pain, for inflammation, for, uh, for uh, clotting, for mucus, okay, mucus, mucus. The mucus of the, for example, of the stomach stomach. So if there is treatment, if you have the mucosal stomach more thicker, you have less risk to have ulcers. So they can give you prostaglandins in order to increase the thickening of the mucus of the of the of in the stomach of the lining of the stomach. Okay, so lipid oxidation we have is the uh, we remember the beta oxidation and when you have lipid oxidation, by the way, that beta oxidation too are able to uh, produce free radicals. The free radicals is the hot potato that we already know, and these hot potato are going to make a uh, burn or destroy uh, cells around. For example, if you have uh, exposed to the sun, your skin for long periods of time, you produce, you have fatty, fatty acids there, and they're in the cell membranes, right? And they react with the oxygen. And the oxygen produced in the skin free radicals that is going to destroy the collagen and you start to have wrinkles because too much exposure to the sun. Okay, so here we have uh, uh, pro-oxidants. So those are uh, agents who can lead into more production of free radicals. Oxygen, radiation, smoking, alcohol, light. Antioxidants, we have the vitamin E. The vitamin C, vitamin C is important. We have every, we need every day vitamin C. Beta carotene, that is the vitamin A or retinoic acid that uh, actually is going to absorb the free radicals, selenium and other elements. Iceberg lettuce is not a good source of antioxidant. Open eyes, open ears. So everything that is very bright, darker is going to contain more anti antioxidants and the iceberg is pale green so they don't have too much antioxidant or too many antioxidants okay heart heart big topic okay heart big topic i want you to remember the uh, the uh, the cavities of the heart so the cavity of the heart all the cavities four cavities we have on the top, atriums, and the lower uh, ventricles. On the uh, right side, we have the oxygenated blood. In the left side, oxygenated blood. The valves between the right atrium and right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. 
the uh, valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle is the mitral valve. And we have here the, uh, uh, the in the right atrium is coming the superior vena cava, entry the inferior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, sorry, is here, this is inferior vena cava, superior vena cava going into the right atrium. The blood goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle is going to be ejected out, this is the oxygenated blood, towards the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery divides in two branches to the, uh, to the left lung and two branches here through the uh, right lung. Then they are going to come back and they come back through the pulmonary veins with oxygenated blood. So the pulmonary veins going to enter blood into the atrium. Then left atrium go to pass through the mitral valve and the mitral valve go to the left ventricle. They go ejected through the aorta, through the aorta. This pulmonary artery valve and this is the aortic valve. Those can be together called you know, or individually the semilunar valves, semilunar valves. Just remember the blood is coming from the atriums to the ventricles, to the atriums to the ventricles. And from the ventricles, they go to the arteries, to the walls, the aorta or to the pulmonary artery. So that is what you need to know. And uh, what is in between, for example, the right atrium and the right ventricle? What is the valve who make the exit of the blood from the right ventricle? What is the valve that is making the exit of the blood in the left ventricle? So those are the kind of questions that you must remember very well. Okay, so I think that is the end of this lecture five review. Uh, all right, so let's go our lecture. Okay, lecture six, we have, uh, we have the membrane transport, very high yield, please. This is extremely important for, uh, for you. Okay, so we have, we're going to have this right now. Just a moment, let me see what time is it. 9.35, 8.35, so we have one hour, stop. Okay, we are okay. All right, cell membrane, so cell. Okay, so for this, what I want you to remember about the cell is, first of all, all the organelles, right? What is the, what is the, um, what is the energy uh, engine of the, of the cell is the mitochondria. Here is what is happening, what the, the Krebs cycle, right? The acetyl-CoA enter into the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is going to transform the, uh, the acetyl-CoA through several reactions into ATPs, right? All right, so uh, the cytoplasm. Cytoplasma is a bilayer membrane. Remember the bilayer membrane? Okay, let me see. No, I don't want that. Uh, okay, it's not here. Bilayer bi membrane. And this bilayer membrane is composed by uh, uh, phospholipids and mainly by proteins. So mainly of phospholipids and proteins. Okay, so the cytoplasma is part of the cell between the cell membrane and the nuclear uh, and the nuclear envelope. So, for example, this is the nuclear envelope and this is the cell membrane. All in between this membrane and the cell membrane, the membrane of the nucleus and the membrane of the of the cell are going to be called cytoplasma. Cytoplasma. Remember, 99% of the composition of the cytoplasma is going to be water. Okay, so now we have here uh, uh, another thing, the nucleolus is inside the, the nucleus and that is going to co produce the messenger RNA, messenger RNA. Then we have here, this is the nucleus, it's coming the endoplasmatic reticulum, that is the rough and this is the smooth. So the transcription happening inside here, translation is going to get into the endoplasmatic reticulum and these like uh, grains are the ribosomes. Those are the cards on Safeway who is going to bring the ingredients, means amino acids, to uh, follow the recipe from the transcription. Here, so that process to uh, provide all the uh, sequence uh, um, needs, like amino acids, for example, is called that translation. Protein primary, secondary, tertiary protein start in the smooth muscle, and the fourth 
and the quaternary is going to go to the Golgi apparatus, Golgi apparatus. Okay, so that is the cartoon where it's going to be, what is this, transcription or translation? That is the translation, translation. Okay, Golgi apparatus is going to be the place where the proteins are going to be activated. All right, so uh, transportation, extremely important. You must know transportation cell membrane. Just remember a few words, the universe equilibrium, right? So they want to know that they want to be in balance all the time. So equal concentrations all the time, okay? And we have two types, passive transportation and active transportation. Passive transportation do not use energy, active transportation use energy. So for this, I think I got, I have some, uh, no, no, I don't have. So I'm going to just uh, mention this. There, this is the one. All right, so passive, no energy. Active, energy. Diffusion, we have the simple diffusion and the facilitate diffusion. Simple diffusion, gas exchange. Facilitate diffusion, it's going to be the glucose enter into the cell. Osmosis is because the semi-permeable membrane cannot make past molecules that are bigger. So what we want to have is equal concentrations. If the solutes cannot pass from one side to another side, water is trying to dilute, dilute the area of higher concentration to make it even. Okay? Okay, so simple diffusion and facilitate diffusion. Okay. The active uh, transportation is using energy, and we have protein pump, and that phagocytosis, open eyes, open ears, protein pump, protein pump. What is protein pump? Is pumping protein? No. The, the transportation is made, the transportation is protein. What is going to do the protein pump is to exchange, put in or put out electrolytes and other uh, substances fluids. So, but basically electrolyte. For example, the sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump is a protein pump because it's made by protein. Who is going, what is going to pump is going to be the sodium and potassium. They can pump other things, chlorine, calcium, etc. Okay, so that is about the active and the passive transportation. All right, so here, another high yield for everything. Open eyes, open ears, please. Hypertonic, hypotonic, isotonic. What, when you talk, say hypertonic, is, hypertonic means that it's more concentration than, the, than inside the cell. Hypotonic means that it's less concentration outside than inside the cell. Isotonic means that there is equal concentrations in and outside of the cell. Okay, so if you have hypertonic, hypertonic outside of the cell is more concentrated, you want to dilute. So water is start to go out from the cell to dilute it outside of the cell in order to make it equal concentration. So that is going to produce a shrinking of the cell, and the cell can, is going to die. Hypotonic. Hypotonic means that outside of the cell is less concentrated than inside of the cell. In other words, where it's more concentrated? Inside the cell. Hypotonic is what, it, what is a concentration outside of the cell. Hypertonic is what is a concentration outside of the cell. Hypertonic means that you, hypertonic means that you have high concentration outside of the cell. Hypotonic means that you have low concentration outside of the cell. And you need to remember that the water is going to go from, from lower concentration to higher concentration in order to dilute it and make even, even uh, concentrations in and out. So hypotonic, just to remember, like I was telling you before, hypotonic is hypopotamus. Who is hypopotamus? The cell. How become hypopotamus? Because the water enter into the cell to make it bigger. Hypotonic. 
hypotonic is low concentration outside the cell compared to inside the cell that's high concentration so water pass from hypotonic area to hyper to high concentration area inside the cell to dilute it. so that's why the cell is going to swell and blow up isotonic there is no entry or exit of water why because th there is no need for that because there are equal concentrations outside and inside okay so that is about the oh this is okay so we need to uh, know this this is a must we have intracellular inside the cell extracellular outside the cell sodium chloride is the salt right salt out of your plate out of your plate out of the cell so this is what is most common sodium and chloride sodium chloride sodium cation positive like a T can you see like a T there and chloride is going to be negative those outside and inside the cell intracellular is potassium and phosphate so the most common uh, cation intracellular is the potassium the most common intracellular anion is the phosphate the most common extracellular cation is the sodium the most common extracellular anion is the chloride phagocytosis don't forget about phagocytosis phagocytosis is means engulfing something or the cell eating okay phagocytosis is going to incorporate in or is going to uh, put out of the cell through this phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the big name for endocytosis and exocytosis. Endo, something is coming in. Exo is something is coming out from the cell. Okay, so from the respiratory, you need to remember the uh, uh, primary function is the gas exchange. We have uh, the ventilation is how you move your thorax. If you breathe faster or slower, superficial or deeper, that is ventilation okay what is normal what you're breathing now what is abnormal if you breathe superficial and faster for example and that means the beginning of probably an infection pharynx is remember the order of the first of all nasopharynx here the oropharynx here this is the tongue this you push down that is oral cavity that is oral pharynx and this is the laryngopharynx laryngopharynx okay all this is pharynx okay perfect so this is the larynx including we have the epiglottis and all this is the upper respiratory tract below that the trachea the trachea and the lungs are going to be the respiratory tract okay we talk about epiglottis is a cartilage we're talking about the main bronchi we have the pleura and we have some pathology that are actually is going to be interesting if you read it again let me go out okay let go oh what happened with the selling just a moment just one please sorry i'm going to go faster Okay, so nutrients. Oh, there is a lot, a lot of uh, uh, you must remember about this. All right, so we talk about uh, metabolism. We're talking about ATPs, and I'm going to make a summary very quick. So please pay attention. You need to remember that glycolysis. Glycolysis, glucose to pyruvic acid, glucose to pyruvic acid, glucose to pyruvic acid. That is a reversible reaction. They are going to happen in the cytoplasm, are going to produce two ATPs. And the pyruvic acid is when uh, is formed, and there is actually no oxygen because you need oxygen to transform in acetyl CoA. The pyruvic acid, instead to go to acetyl CoA because you don't have enough oxygen, they are going to turn into lactic acid. Lactic acid is reversible to pyruvic acid, can lead to some ATPs. 
Lactic acid is the is the molecule that make you soreness uh, uh, sore on the on the muscles. Okay. All right. So then we have uh, acetyl CoA is the common end for fats. If you see the arrows, the common fat, the common pathway for protein. Primary use of energy is the carbs, glucose, fructose, galactose. Those those are the monosaccharides. Fatty and lipids. So we have fatty acids and glycerol. So for example, we have uh, fatty acids and triglycerides. Triglycerides are, I didn't say, I didn't mention cholesterol. Why? Because cholesterol cannot produce acetyl-CoA. Cholesterol is not used for fuel. We cannot use for, it by, for fuel. So we have the fatty acids and the triglycerides and into acetyl-CoA. Proteins can lead into acetyl-CoA too. So all of, all of them acetyl-CoA. Okay, so carbs can produce acetyl-CoA, and when you have excess of acetyl-CoA, they can lead into uh, uh, glycogen. So they go back to the uh, pyruvic acid, sorry, you have excess of pyruvic acid, they are going to turn into, because you don't produce more energy than you need, right? So the pyruvic, if you keep eating carbs, pyruvic acid cannot go into acetyl-CoA because you don't need more energy. So pyruvic acid go to, uh, to glycogen. They are going to turn into glycogen. Fatty acids can turn into uh, acetyl-CoA and more fatty acids, more fat deposit. So they cannot go, fatty acid cannot go into carbs. How many ATPs we have in the glycolysis? It's two ATPs. How many uh, total we have? 36 ATPs. So that is about about you need to know the uh, nutrient processing, ingestion, digestion. What does it mean, digestion? In one word, absorption is going to be a transportation across the cell membrane towards the uh, to the bloodstream. Distribution is where distribution is not part of the GI tract because distribution is being distribution made by arteries and veins. All right. Assimilation is when the nutrients become part of our body. So, for example, some proteins are going to be part of the cell membrane. That is already assimilation. Okay. So, we're talking about the Krebs cycle. The, uh, okay. All right, talking about the digestive system, we need to divide the digestive system in the GI tract and the accessory organs. What are the accessory organs? The liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Behind here, the stomach. Can you see the pancreas here? Where is the pancreas? It's the pancreas. Pancreas. Okay, and the GI tract is going to be all the tubing, all the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines. Bolus is what you eat, the food in your mouth. When you swallow, the, uh, the bolus is changed name in the stomach called chyme. Remember the small intestine starts with a duodenum. A small intestine starts with a duodenum. So we have three components of the small intestine. Duodenum, uh, a small intestine, and a large intestine. The, the, uh, the small intestine is going to start with a duodenum jejunum and ileum, three components of the small intestine. And we have the, uh, the uh, colon that is the ascending, is, well, colon is colon, is, but the division of the colon is ascending, transverse, and descending, and the colon sigmoids. Okay. So let's go to our number eight. At the end, please, I want you to stay because I'm going to do some uh, extra considerations just to be sure that we're okay. This is number eight. It's something that we already talked about, the beta oxidation. Beta oxidation needs oxygen or no? 
Yes, they need oxygen. That's why it's called beta oxidation. That means an aerobic reaction. Aerobic reaction. Okay, so about the proteins. Can we store proteins? Answer is no. No, we cannot. Uh, 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 we cannot what? store proteins. Uh, what happens so? So the amino acids are going to be eliminated. How? Through the deamination. If you eat too much proteins, you're going to use the protein, the amino acids that you need, and the rest is going to be eliminated. But before the elimination happens, the, the body is going to deaminate. They are going to take out the radical amino, and this amino is, uh, uh, is going to transform in ammonia. Ammonia is, is captured by the, uh, by the liver, and the liver transforms ammonia that is very toxic into urea. And the urea is the one who is going to be eliminated through the urine. Okay? So remember the urinary, uh, the urine is going to follow, the, they're going to be formed from the nephron, go to the pelvis of the kidney, they go to the ureter, they reach the urinary bladder, and then the ureter. Gluconeogenesis that we have here is the production of glucose from especially proteins. Okay, the urinary system, many questions about urinary system. What you need to know are the parts of the urinary system. We have the, the what? The cortex, we have the medulla, Pyramids, one million nephrons, the majority in the cortex. The collecting duct is not part of the nephron. This portion is, so this is the glomerular Bowman's capsule, that is nephron, nephron, proximal convolutable nephron, uh, loop of Henle, nephron, and the distal convolutable nephron. All this is nephron, but this portion is not. That is the collecting duct that is going to be going through the pyramid. Then they go to the pelvis, then they go to the ureter. There's more anatomy, but it's just simplified because it's what we need at this, at this moment. The functional unit of the kidney, who is the functional unit of the kidney? Is the nephron, nephron. What are the functions of the nephron? It's the same, what are the functions of the kidney? So that's why it's called a functional unit. It's the minimum uh, portion of the kidney who can make all the functions of the whole kidney. Similar, same, I mean, not similar, same. So fresh. Filtration, reabsorption, excretion, uh, sec, uh, hormones, so those are the functions of the kidney that we are going to see later on in anatomy and physiology. Okay, so that is our eight. Let's go our nine. Okay, let's go to our nine. All right, okay, energy out of nervous system. Okay. So about energy in and out, what I want you to remember, you have the review here of uh, in your PowerPoint about uh, this uh, Krebs cycle, right? Remember when we want to create a more ATPs, the energy is coming from the food. And once you take, you already create the ATPs, the cell can use that energy for the metabolic needs of the cell. So when you are tired and you feel weak, you want energy, what do you do? You eat, right? So the food is going to give providing the energy in order to recharge your ADPs. You're going to recharge your ADPs. Okay. All right, so just remember, uh, we were talking about the glycogen already, so we are not going to go on that. We already talked about that. Uh, 
let's see. All right, so here we have the Atkins diet. Uh, they have worked by inducing a state of ketosis, no carbs, and eat only proteins. All right, so ketosis, what they are going to do is high concentration of ketosis is going to force the kidney to eliminate the ketone acids, and that is forcing your kidney. So when you eat just proteins, the kidneys are actually over accelerate the engine of your car. So you don't want that because at the end they are going to destroy little by little uh, nephrons and you can lead into uh, kidney failure. So for example, that is not recommended. And what is the best diet again? The best diet is the balanced diet. Open eyes, open ears, 50% carbs, 30% fat, 20% proteins. So this Atkins is not actually a, a, a recommended for uh, to, re to decrease weight. This Atkins diet can be suggested for people who are sick. They need to regenerate some tissue that is going to be temporary diet and uh, we need proteins in order to produce a, a, a regeneration of, of tissue, but no for loose weight. Low fat diets, very low fat diets, or niche diet. The problem is, is that they have, uh, the fat is not converted very fast into energy. So, and uh, sugars are going to provide you that. So when you have low fat, you're still hungry. So they tend to have some amount of carbs. So here we have, for example, that's why they give you more carbs. So on this diet is not recommended. What is the best diet? Is 50 carbs, 30% fat, 20% 20 proteins. Okay, so here for the uh, basal metabolic rate, the concept. Basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy necessary to sustain the ba basic functions of the body to keep it alive. Heart beating, your breathing, right? So those are actually your brain function and conscious is going to use energy. TDEE is the, uh, we have, is the total dietary energy expenditure in a day. And that is the uh, measured by the BMR, the basal metabolic rate, multiplied by the activity factor. Okay, so I want, I don't want you to remember the formulas. It's not going to be needed. I want you to remember just the concept. Another important concept is about carbohydrates, four kilocalories per gram. Proteins, four kilocalories. Fat, nine. Alcohol, seven. And water, zero. Okay, so talking about the nervous system was the last class that we have, the central and peripheral nervous system. The peripheral, the central is going to be composed by the brain, cerebrum, and the brain stem, and uh, that is the brain plus the spinal cord. We have anterior, the, uh, the frontal lobe for motor activity, para, parietal lobe for sensorial activity, sensitivity, the uh, occipital lobe for vision, and the uh, temporal love for hearing. So we are going to have uh, the efferent, please, efferent, efferent, you need to remember this, please. Efferent is just hit your hand, hit your hand, and that is the efferent. This is the receptors of your hand. So this is the efferent with A, they go to the corresponding level of the spinal cord, they go up to the, up to the the brain and come back through the motor neuron. Motor neuron is the efferent, 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 okay? All right, so this is the receptor and this is the, uh, this is actually the uh, uh, efferent, the motor neuron. We have the arc reflex in order to, you have the sensory here, for example, you hit the patella, your knee, you have a reflex, so the reflex is coming, but instead to go to the cortex of the brain, they make a shortcut through these neurons. So instead to go up, they go directly to the efferent, efferent nerve. That is called the interneuron, interneuron. 
Okay, so we have the somatic and the autonomic, and just remember the somatic, again, please, summary here. Somatic is voluntary, it's part of the peripheral nervous system, somatic and autonomic, right? Somatic is going to use acetocoate to contract the muscles. Somatic, voluntary muscles, when you do exercises, you're, uh, you are willing to move your arms, right? And your muscles, that is voluntary. Autonomic, we have the uh, the what the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Sympathetic use adrenaline, means adrenergic receptors. The parasympathetic use as the same as the somatic. The parasympathetic use the acetylcholine. Remember, acetylcholine is not the same to say acetylcholine. It's totally different. Okay, we have adrenaline or epinephrine. We have the noradrenaline or norepinephrine. And all these guys together, adrenaline and noradrenaline, are going to be called what? Catecholamines. Catecholamines. Okay, so the acetylcholine are be sorry. The sympathetic is the rest and digest. The parasympathetic is the uh, sorry. I mean sympathetic. I'm sorry. I apologize. Sympathetic is the fight or flight. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. The adrenaline and using adren adrenergic receptors. And the parasympathetic is the rest and digest, is the acetylcholine, cholinergic, re cholinergic uh, uh, receptors used for, uh, for muscles, right? Hard to. Okay, we talk about the dendrites. Okay, so here we have the synaptic, uh, the synapsis. Synapsis, this is the presynaptic, post-synaptic, synaptic gap. And let's go to our last lecture. And I want you to stay because, uh, well, if you want to stay, I'm going to do some uh, remarks. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, what we have here. Okay, just a moment, please. Okay, about enzymes, an very high yield topic. Here we are going to talk about, first of all, what I want you to remember is this, is the definition, binding site, binding site of the enzyme, the binding site, the enzyme active site, when the reaction is happening. Okay, the reaction is happening here. Here we have, and you see the change of color, this is the enzyme again, enzyme, 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 and this is the substract. The substract is going to get divided, it's going to start to be uh, made it, and the enzyme already has two different products. So we have, for example, a, product, uh, a substance that are going to be converted by the enzyme in two different products, or sub-products, that are going to be used by the body. So that is, remember, binding site, and when they have, and the, this is reacting, the, it's called the active site, active site. Okay, so let's keep going. Enzymes, everything ending ACE, lipase, proteins, amylase. We was talking about in the previous lectures, uh, in the previous review, we have coenzymes and cofactors. We talk about that already. The denaturation. The denaturation is going to be the, the change totally of the shape of the protein. And that happens in the body, especially when you have extreme temperatures, sorry, extreme pH, pH, and high temperatures. Okay, so the pH, remember all the pH, the pH is going to be 0 to 14, pH 2 acid, uh, I mean gastric acid. PH6, the uh, urinary, uh, the urine, sorry, PH7 water, PH12, the uh, pancreatic use. Okay, so those are basically the, uh, on the binding side, what we need to remember. And here we, uh, I want you just to review extra about the competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition. That is going to be so useful when we are talking about uh, farm. All right, so we have the, the last portion is the brain stem. 
the brain stem, if you see here, this is the sagittal view. We have the G ray, we have the black dot is the uh, sulci. Again, in the sulci, it where it's going to be lined by the uh, gray matter, the black line, gray matter, the very thin is the skin of the orange we were talking class. And this uh, gray matter is unmyelinated nerve cells. Below this, these are going to be the white matter. White matter is a, a function is to transmit electric impulse or the orders of the gray matter uh, to connect different areas of the brain. And this is composed by my, myelin, myelinated nerve cells who are going to help the uh, accelerate the transmission. All right, so we have the midbrain, pons, and medulla. What I want you to remember is about the medulla oblongata, a basomotor and respiratory center. Re basomotor and the respiratory center. Okay, so who controls your respi respiratory rate? The medulla oblongata. Who controls the, uh, the heart rate? The medulla oblongata. Okay, so diencephalon are composed, if you see here, this is the diencephalon composed by gray matter. The hypothalamus is part of the nervous system who participate or control, let's put it that way, the homeostasis in the body. Cerebellum is uh, coordination, posture, and balance connected by the vermis connected by the vermis. So we have the right and the left hemispheres of the cerebellum that is going to be connected through the vermis. We have the, uh, we have the limbic system that is side by side of the, of the what? Of the diencephalon. And we have the hippocampus, amygdala and ras. Hippocampus is, le is uh, learning and memory. Amygdala is emotions and reticular is the uh, alertness. All right, so we was talking about what is the uh, bridge between the right and the left cerebral hemisphere is the corpus callosum. The activities of the motor of the of the frontal motor area, parietal sensorial area, sensoria uh, sensory and the occipital visual and the temporal auditory. So those are the things I want to minimum now uh, for, for this time. Neurotransmitters, we have epinephrine, adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, mood or uh, neurotransmitter. GABA is an inhibitor and endorphin is, is going to be uh, 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 diminishing that perception of pain. Okay, so uh, now this is the review, uh, the general review of the uh, midterm. I'm going to make some uh, extra considerations, so please pay attention. Okay, I want you to remember, study very well about the, uh, the in conclusion, what I was remarking in this, in this review is please remember about your um, a, a, uh, how we are, we have actually the the six health dimensions, the six health dimensions. Okay. Then I want to remember you about the heart, all the valves, all the cavities, what is coming in, what is coming out. I want you to remember, for example, the portions of the of the brain. We have the cerebrum. We have the central central sulcus and we have the longitudinal fissure of the brain. Remember that we have the pH. pH is going to be a zero acid, 14 uh, is going to be alkaline, 7 is neutral. So everything below 7 is acid, everything above 7 is alkaline. Remember about the tissues, the epithelial tissue, and I want you to remember the uh, pseudostratified epithelium, the goblet cells and its functions. 
talking about tissues, you need to remember about the uh, classification of the connective tissue, the liquid, the heart, the fibers, and the loose connective tissue. You need to remember we was talking just about the enzymes. The enzymes are going to be important for the um, um, uh, what is the importance of the enzyme? Few things. Number one, accelerate the reaction. Number two is going to need some cofactors and coenzymes in order to produce the reaction. Uh, please um, try to make the difference between ionic and covalent uh, bonds. Covalent polar water, covalent no polar fat. Again, covalent polar water hydrophilic, co covalent no polar fat hydrophobic. Okay. Uh, when you're talking about the nervous system, I want you to always remember about what is the efferent, what is the efferent, what are the functions of what is doing the efferent versus the efferent. Uh, about the transportation, best example of uh, passive, uh, passive uh, transportation. Uh, simple, simple diffusion, sorry, simple diffusion or facilitate diffusion. What is the difference? What are the similarities? What are the uh, characteristics of the of the one of the active uh, transportation? You need to remember that you have uh, down the concentration gradient. Please remember this: down the concentration gradient. Down the concentration gradient means from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, so down, so higher to low concentration, that is down the concentration gradient. And that is for basically the simple diffusion and the facilitated diffusion. Uh, when we have the active transportation that is against the concentration gradient, is the opposite. Against the, con the concentration gradient is going to be the, uh, the, what? the uh, active transportation. That is why the active transportation, because go against the current of the river, let's put it that way, go up to the river against the current, we need energy for that. So that's why active transportation go against the concentration gradient. The facilitate diffusion and the simple diffusion go, go uh, towards the, down the concentration gradient. So it's going like going down the river and you don't need to uh, 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 pedal anything. So that, that's why you don't need energy. Okay, transportation. Uh, all right, so it's mostly happening spontaneously in that simple diffusion, right? Facilitated diffusion are going to be uh, spontaneously. Another thing I want you to know is that transportation, we have, I mean, uh, we have, you need to know what is intracellular, what is extracellular. You need to know what is the uh, uh, electrolytes, more common cations or anions. These cations and anions are ions, correct? So you need to tell me what is inside, what is more common outside. All right, so uh, transportation that we have, uh, a, what is, a, for example, a free radical. I want you to define what is free radical. Don't tell me it's a hot potato. Tell me that is the excess of electrons, excess of electrons. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, the functions of the, I want to know, remember you, I want to remember the functions of the lobes of the, of the brain. Okay, and about diet, what happens when you eat too much sugar, what happens when you eat too much fat, what happens when you eat too much protein. Okay. If you eat too much protein, what happens? Ketoacidosis, right? If you eat too excess of fat, more fat. If you eat excess of carbs, glycogen, or more fat. Uh, all the anatomy of the kidney, all the anatomy of the kidney, all, uh, uh, all the components of the kidney, what is the uh, uh, functional unit of the kidney? About the GI tract, uh, what is the main function, for example, of the of the stomach? What is the main function of the stomach? To 
digest. Why? Because again, gastric acid. What is the main function of the of the intestine? The absorption. That's why it's long. So, uh, what is the function of the colon? It's mostly absorb water. Why water? What happened with the nutrients? Why? Because the nutrients are already being absorbed in the small intestine. So the only thing they can absorb now is water. Okay. All right, so that is about what I want to uh, let you know uh, about the uh, Krebs cycle. Please be aware of that. So all the uh, glycolysis, the intermediate uh, intermediate uh, phase, and the uh, Krebs cycle that ends into the ATC, the ele uh, electron transport chain. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Basically, I think we uh, all this review we will highlight uh, topics that are, in my point of view, important you to remember or keep in mind all the time. All right, so I think we finish our review today. Uh, tell me what time is it? It's uh, uh, ten nineteen. So we have uh, how much? It's uh, like two hours. So I think it was. A, a comprehensive review uh, remarking all what is most relevant. All right, so 